Welcome to my live cast here on my YouTube channel. I'm Shane Burgess. Today we're going to be talking on the subject of salvation through Jesus Christ. See, Jesus Christ himself said, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. This totally destroys this whole entire concept of coexist and that there are many ways to heaven and stuff like that. That is not at all what the Bible says. See, our good works cannot get us into heaven. A lot of people think that they're going to go to heaven because they're a good person. But the Bible itself says in Isaiah 64, verse 6, But we are all like an unclean thing, and all our righteousness are like filthy rags. We all fade as a leaf, and our iniquities, like the wind, have taken us away. So the Bible clearly says our righteousness is as filthy rags. The book of Galatians takes us even deeper. Starting in verse... All right, chapter 2, verse 16. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, meaning a man is not justified by his works, but by faith in Jesus Christ. Even we have believed in Christ that we may be justified by faith in Christ. And not by the works of the law. Not by our works. For by the works of the law, no flesh shall be justified. Our works cannot justify us. There is only one thing that justifies us. And that is Jesus Christ himself. Alright. So why is it? That works cannot justify us. Romans chapter 3 verse 23. For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. See, because our works are as filthy rags. And we all sin. Therefore, we all fall short of the glory of God. And this is a big problem. Why is it a big problem? See, the Bible says in Romans chapter 6, verse 23, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. See, sin is a problem because sin equals death. All sin technically has a built-in death system to it. You have sex outside of marriage? you can get a sexual disease. You do drugs, that drug drug ends up targeting a certain part of the body to end up killing you. Whether it's blood, whether it's through muscle, whether it's through killing brain cells, or even drinking kills the liver. And we know that the Bible talks against alcohol. It talks against getting drunk. In doing alcohol, it actually says, do not look at the wine when it is red. So sin has a built-in death system to it. So, the Bible tells us that the wages of sin is death. But the only way to eternal life is through, is through Christ Jesus our Lord. See, all other founders of the faith, you can actually visit their graves. Buddha was in search for the truth. Muhammad in search for the truth. Paganism in search for the truth. See, none of them know that they are going to heaven 
or whatever they believe is their eternal reward for serving that god. But only, only through Jesus Christ can we know. And Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He was in search for the truth. He was the truth. So Romans chapter 8 tells us exactly why it's through Jesus Christ that we can have eternal life. Romans chapter 8. Thought I had it marked down, but apparently I didn't. All right, so here we are. Yet in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Oh, wait. Nope, that ain't it. Okay, here we are. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak, so what what we couldn't do by our works because of our weakness through sin. Weak through the flesh, God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh. So when Adam and Eve fell, when they partook of what they were not supposed to partake of, they brought death into the world. See, they, through sin, what Adam did through sinning, <laughs> what Adam ended up doing when he brought sin into the world, he corrupted the flesh itself. His son, in the likeness of sinful flesh on account of sin, he condemned his condemned sin in the flesh. He condemned sin through Jesus Christ, through the flesh of Jesus Christ. That the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who did not walk according to the flesh. <laughs> Why? Because Jesus knew no sin. See, he who knew no sin became sin that the righteousness of God might be fulfilled. That the righteousness of God might be fulfilled. So we did not walk according to the flesh but according to the Spirit. See, Jesus Christ, through His earthly ministry, did everything by the Spirit. See, we can see Jesus Christ didn't even start His ministry until He was baptized. And once He was baptized, we see the, that the Spirit <laughs> descends like a dove upon Him, sits on His shoulder, and a voice from heaven said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. So we see the three three persons of the Godhead. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. One God, three persons. Which can be explained if you think of it as, as if in a family form. You have the mother, you have the father, you have the child. Now, I'm not saying that the Holy Spirit is the mother or anything, but it's the best way to understand the Trinity. And, of course, the Son is submitted to the Father, and the Holy Spirit is submitted to the Father and the Son. 
So there is order in the Godhead. And it's the closest that we can get to explaining it. So anyway. So yeah. So here we see that the Holy Spirit My markers are falling out. All right. So. God judge sin. Through his son. Jesus Christ. By putting the punishment on him. On his flesh. That we can be redeemed. And then, he turned around and rose Jesus Christ from the dead. And the Bible says this, in Romans chapter 4, starting in verse 23. Now, it was not written for his sake alone. All right, let's go up to verse 22. Therefore, it was accounted to him for righteousness, talking about Abraham. Now, it was not written for his sake alone that it was imputed to him, but for us. So the promise was not just for Abraham, but for us. It shall be imputed to us who believe in him. Now we're talking about Jesus Christ. All right. I don't know if I'm explaining that right, so let's go back a few verses. He did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief, talking about Abraham, but it was a... Alright, through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God, and being fully convinced that what he had promised he was able to perform. Therefore it was accounted to him for righteousness. Now, it was not written for his sake alone that it was imputed to him. Yes, we're talking about Abraham there. But also for us. It shall be imputed to us who believe in him. Now, now we're talking about God or Jesus Christ. Who was raised... Okay, yes, it was talking about God the Father. Who believe in him. Who raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead. So, it, it's saying, it shall be imputed, the promise of Abraham shall be imputed to us who believe in him, who raised up Jesus, our Lord, from the dead, who was delivered up, who was delivered to, dead, to death because of our offenses and was raised for our justification. Jesus Christ himself was raised for our justification. So Jesus died for our sin, raised for our justification. Therefore, if we believe in him, we shall partake of one, Abraham's blessing, and two, be justified through the death and burial of Jesus Christ. And, of course, his resurrection. And this is why, moving on over to verse 10, or chapter 10, it says that if we confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead, we shall, shall being the strongest word for will, we shall, we will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. 
For whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now before I get into the altar call, there's one thing I want to establish. We are saved through the blood of Jesus Christ. But moving on to an even more powerful thing, because I don't want you to just partake of one part of salvation. I want you to have the full salvation message. So let's move over to Peter. Okay, first Peter, I believe it is. All right, that ain't it. Okay, verse 24. Let's move over to verse 23 first. Who then he has reviled. All right, let's actually go to verse 21. For, for to this you were called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that you should follow his steps. So Jesus Christ is our example. Nobody else but him. So nobody else's testimony, because you don't know what's going on behind the scenes, actually establishes anything. But Jesus Christ is our example. Who committed no sin was deceit, or became sin... All oh right. Who committed no sin, nor was deceit found in his mouth. All oh right. Who, when he was reviled, did not revile in return. When he suffered, he did, did not threaten, but committed himself to him who judges righteously. Who bore our sins. Jesus Christ bore our sins in his own body on the tree, in his own flesh upon the tree. That we, having died the sin might live for righteousness. So we die the sin when we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. By his stripes you were healed. You see in Isaiah it says it a whole a little bit differently. Isaiah chapter 53 And I'm dealing with a sticky page here. So, all right. Isaiah 53, verse 5. But he was wounded for our transgressions, but he was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. But in Peter, we see it says, by his stripes we were healed. So what's the difference here? Uh, in Isaiah, they were still waiting for Jesus to come. But in Peter, he already came. So by his stripes, you were healed. It's already done. So when you get saved, whatever you're struggling with, you can be healed that very second. Why? It's already done through Jesus Christ. Through his body, through his b body, you are healed. He bore his stripes for you. And by his blood, your sins are washed away. And by his resurrection, you are justified. All you have to do is, of course, as I said, believe in your heart. And confess with your mouth that God rose Jesus from the dead. You shall be saved for whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall, strongest word for will, be saved. So all you have to do is pray this prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Forgive me of my sins. For I believe that you lived, died, and rose again for me. 
for my sins. So take me as I am, Lord Jesus. For I believe that you lived, died, and rose again. And so let my sins from this moment on be washed away. And give me your own nature, your godly nature. In Jesus' mighty name, I have prayed. Amen. If you have prayed that prayer, I'd like to welcome you into the family. And you need to do two things. One, click on the Just Got Say button under RevivalToday.com. Fill out that information. They will send you a Bible and other material. Two, find a Bible Believe in Spirit-filled church. You can actually get in contact with my church, His Tabernacle Family Church, at HisTabernacle.com. Or, of course, just by looking up the website, they can give you a phone number and stuff to where they can help you find a Bible Believe in Spirit-filled church. If you don't have one in your area, then, then all you need to do is tune in to our live stream at not 9 a.m. or 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time under, of course, the same website, HisTabernacleFamilyChurch.com. You can even... Start step one, rock solid faith, tonight, Tuesday, at 7 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you don't have a Bible-believing, spirit-filled church in your area, or if, of course, you are in my area, in the Horsehead, Waverly area, I encourage you to be there. The anointing, the power of God is a whole lot more powerful when you're there live in person. So yeah, make sure that you get, make sure that, of course, you fill out that information on RevivalToday.com under the Just Got Say button and get involved with the Bible-believing, spirit-filled church because we don't want you to just start the race. We want you to finish the race. Now, for those who have actually just watched or want to be filled with the baptism of the Holy Spirit, which I will be getting into that possibly next week but of course if you want it right now right now I and for those who just got saved I want you to have the baptism of the Holy Spirit so if you want to receive that right here right now right now I pray a baptism of the Holy Spirit to come up on you in Jesus name be filled with the Holy Spirit and with the bapti and with the fire of the Holy Spirit, with the baptism of the Holy Spirit and fire in Jesus' mighty name. Now, thanks for watching this live broadcast. Or if you're watching later, once again, thanks for watching. See you next week. All right. Soon as I find out how to end this thing, we are out of here.